Mm -hmm. All right, guys, welcome back to The Corporate and the Mystic Breaking Down Burnout, episode four, which is the last one in this little mini series. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm kind of a bit sad to be honest I've really enjoyed this conversation and I've really really enjoyed and I know you have too Ange our inboxes gosh right. it's just inspired whew, some really really deep and um, expansive inquiry for so many of us it's been so good so thank right. you all <laughs> yeah um so today, today's topic is life beyond burnout. And there is. <laughs> yes, it? there is. We're living proof. <laughs> so we're going to talk about this in three, three ways. One, um, building a supportive community around you. Two is this idea that Jen and I both very strongly believe that not just breaking through burnout, but living a really good quality life comes down to self-responsibility and self-trust and the healing and self-love that comes from that. And then we're going to offer you some tips for, you know, in terms of what our suggestions for finding ongoing support would be and little things that you can do to keep yourself um, on track in good shape. And like always, towards the end of the call, there'll be time for questions. So if you want to drop those into the chat or the Q&A, no matter which, um, we'll find them and address them towards the end, um, inviting your comments along the way. Uh, if you haven't done so already, connect to us, connect with us on socials. So we're both on Facebook, we're both on Instagram. If you search Jennifer Forster, you'll find a beautiful picture of Jen and the Ange Koning on Insta. You'll find us there. And there's stuff that we share in this space all the time. So if you haven't connected with us there yet, you're more than welcome to. And LinkedIn as well. And LinkedIn, yes. I was just going to say, and LinkedIn, of course. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's start with this idea of life beyond burnout. Well, maybe we can just make some introductory remarks, Jen, about what our lives have been like beyond burnout. Yeah, I think so. I think that's a beautiful place to start. Um, I, I think for me, being in, in burnout, two things. I didn't know I was in burnout and coming out of it, the very distinct and clear difference was what gave me the access to be in prevention mode and not slip back into it. So um, there are some really key things that that are just so important to me in my life. And I, one of the, these things I'll talk about in a moment, but the number one thing that I guard these days with my life, because my life does actually depend on this, is my energy. My energy is the number one thing that, um, that, I, that I just won't compromise for anything or anyone. And that's in itself been a huge part of you know living you know really aligned and happy and peaceful and I couldn't have known it could have had such an impact just that one thing mm. what about you yeah protecting your energy I love it um life beyond burnout for me has been the shift out of struggle and into alignment creation expansion so it's shifting away from problem solving mode. How do I solve problems in my life or business to now oh, most of the time, I just, I just don't attend to those things unless they really, unless they really deserve to be solved. Mm -hmm. And what I'm focused on is where I'm going, what that future looks like, how I feel on the journey to it. Yes. Protecting my energy. Yes. Um, choosing and that means for me choosing how I spend my time but it also means working with the flow of my energy in terms of my priorities so um, I kind of prioritize my life in a way these days that um, allow allows me to trust myself which we'll get onto in a minute um, that the right things that deserve my attention today will come up and yeah I'll I don't need to be constantly doubting if I've done enough or if I've covered everything. 
I trust that the right things will emerge for my attention and that's how I roll. Mm, I love that, Ange. Yeah, I love that. And it's a beautiful segue into the the two key pieces, which we did touch on last week. So if you haven't uh, listened to the replays, do go back and listen to them. Episode two and three, judging by my inbox, are the two that just everybody's mind. So um, do take them in. But we were talking last week about self-trust and self-responsibility being the two key elements that really underpin alignment and staying keeping in flow and staying in flow and being able to be in that state of grace and space in your life which you know is burnout is where you're burnout free so to start with self-trust and um and just coming back to what you just said knowing yourself deeply and knowing you know uh what what is going what is important for you in your day is is really a key starting point there so and knowing yourself I actually wrote down on my little notepad today know thy true self I did a program a couple of years ago called know thy true self um but knowing thy true self is how you really develop self-trust and there's ways in which you can do that. And some of the ways I've done it is through understanding uh, my own energy in correlation to my cycle. Now, this is kind of getting into a, a you know, a, a, a whole separate conversation, but, but it's for me been critical to self-trust because the, when I know my true self, thy true self, I trust that part of me. And so understanding my energy flow and my energy cycles and where that information comes from has been key and I know Ange we've we talk about this in our you know in when we're on the mountains and stuff together a lot but knowing where knowing your cycle is going to be critical in understanding your energy patterns as well because everybody not just women but women are pretty blessed because they They've got this little code that they can come to know through their cycle. And whether you um, whether you still bleed or whether you are in menopause, you still have a cycle, so do men. And inside of that cycle, when you can begin to know that, and I'm just to, in my head, I keep hearing to share. I have a PDF on this. So if anybody would like uh, the PDF on this, um, I'm more than happy to send it out to you. I won't send it just um, randomly with the replay, but if you're watching this or watching this now, shoot me a message and I'll send it to you. But it's, it's how to help you understand your own cycle of energy because we're not meant to be producing all the time. You know, and I use um, the analogy of an apple tree is how I help people understand this. You know, if you look at an apple tree, an apple tree is not designed to be producing apples 24-7. It has a season, as do we. As do we have seasons of productivity and pro um, seasons of when we need to rest and regenerate and seasons of when we're blossoming new ideas and, and creativity. We too have that as well. And when we can know ourselves at that level, then we can work with our energy on a month, you know, on a, you know, month to month as well, which makes you so incredibly productive. And you stop beating yourself up or when you rest, because you kind of know, <laughs> wait a second, hey, I'm I'm not meant to be producing apples 24-7 here. And That's so been the biggest gift for me, Jen, is you get to be gentle with yourself oh, in, the, in the downtime. Yes, we're meant to have downtime. We are absolutely meant to have that. The weeks, you know, in my weeks when my energy I know needs to be replenished and regenerated, and you, you can bring the moon phases in on this as well, um, I, I don't say these things to myself like oh, what's wrong with me I don't kind of go oh you know I'm being lazy I don't kind of go you know oh you know I'm a bad person because you know everyone else is doing stuff and I just want to watch Netflix I know that that's not going to be a forever thing and I know that it's it's my body saying we need to rest and regenerate right 
and and you know it doesn't mean that we become you know we become ineffective it actually makes us more effective because when we're on we're in full trust of okay this is my high energy week you know what do I need to do in this week um, can I bring, like with Ange, can I bring my VIP days, schedule them into my, you know, high energy week so that I'm fully, fully productive and I've got lots and lots of energy? And can I make sure that I don't put my VIP days on my week where I know my energy is low? When we truly tr know ourselves at this level, you will trust yourself and your productivity in a way that you just you won't compromise it you just won't because yeah you just you just trust yourself you, you know you know you right we've all got unique codes we all have unique a unique energy cycle and if you can know that um there's a book called Soul, Mo <laughs> Soul Modes by Carly Marie that talks about this too. Yes, Diane, I don't know that book. My favourite book on this topic is a book called Code Red by Lisa Lister. Oh, I lent it to my son's girl uh, partner. She reached right. out to me and asked me about this because I talk about it all the time. She goes, I'd love to really work with my my the energy of my cycle I went here here's a book but the book is called Code Red by Lisa Lister um yeah yeah but let me know if anyone is you know wants my very simplified pdf to help you get your head around this happy to send it to you yeah all right so self-trust Jen you're sort of really recommending to like anchor into the flow of energy especially for women that connects with your cycle um anything else to add on that because i might talk a bit about sort of self-responsibility yeah i was gonna yeah i was gonna um hand that over to you now and go okay um yeah, yeah. go go yeah so, no that's me done yeah i mean i could talk about this forever but bring in the self-responsibility piece to that yeah yeah okay so i might talk about this since i'm the corporate from the corporate perspective and um, as I was thinking about this topic of self-responsibility, self-trust, a client, I'm going to tell it through a client story. Um, he own, He's the owner of a multi, multi-million dollar manufacturing business and they produce urban art. And he's carved off a little bit of his business um, to work with globally renowned artists and bring their work to life before... They have an exhibition partner or before the work is commissioned or they know that they're going to have a buyer he will fund that artist's work and bring it to life now um, he's truly he's in a manufacturing business but he's truly a creative at heart and what he's had, had to come to terms with is hey mel thanks for joining hey, us. yeah i know i was just gonna say hi yeah. mel <laughs> what he's had to come to terms with is the balance of freedom and responsibility because his artistic creative side really wants the freedom to expand and create and be global like he's not just in the states he'll be in like expanding into the middle east and europe soon and the other side of that, though, is responsibility. And this is where he's been beating himself up because he hasn't regarded himself as a good businessman, right? He's regarded himself as the artist. So all of my work with him, he engaged me. He's like, Ange, can you help me do business better? Couldn't help him with the art, let's face it. Right? <laughs> help me do I disagree. <laughs> And I'm like, all right. And so we tried that for a while and he fucking hated it. <laughs> like he resisted it. And so in the end, I'm like, okay, how are we gonna, how are we gonna get him in tune with himself? I realized he wasn't in tune with himself. And so I just had a coaching call with him two days ago where we only committed, we have a thing called daily top fives as part of my coaching process. And they're the top five things that a leader would need to do every day to feel satisfied, like they've done enough, that like their world is under control. So I've touched those five things even lightly, it's under control. This is self-responsibility, right? So for him to have all of that freedom without the guilt of not attending to the things that will eventually bite him on the butt if he's not really responsible in that business space 
So freedom and self-responsibility are two sides of the same coin. They necessarily go together. Um, and for me, self-trust kicks in here when we understand that. We go, actually, you know, if I'm going to live a life of freedom, like he is in New York and doing beautifully creative, expansive things, like I am, I'm sitting here in Harvey Bay today uh, overlooking Fraser Island and the sparkling water and the marina. But the other side of that is self-responsibility. He and I in business can have that freedom because we're responsible for delivering certain things that make our worlds work, right? Um, so for, for that self-responsibility is how do I do that in a way that still feels aligned? Now, this afternoon I'm delivering, um, someone on this call actually is coming here for a client VIP afternoon and we're going to do some planning for her manufacturing business. Um, I wanted to make that a beautiful experience. I wanted the energy of that to feel good. So I booked myself, booked us, the penthouse here. We've got a lovely view. Um, we're going out for dinner afterwards. And this is freedom and responsibility working together. This is my choice to say, let me work in a way that's fun for me. Now, if you're in the corporate world and you're in a cubicle, um the approach is different and i know some of the people on this call will be having that experience so if i was um in the corporate world myself i'd be asking how can i approach today in self-trust and self-responsibility how can i approach today with a lightness and fun and ease how do I trust myself to just know that I'm attending to the right things, that I'm doing enough, that I am enough by virtue of the fact that I'm just showing up and attending to the things that I've got planned, attending to the things that pop up, sure. I trust myself to prioritize. I'm responsible in prioritizing the things that are truly important, truly big, good quality problems. I'm not always going to devolve into the shitty little administrative churn problems just so that I can feel productive and tick off, you know, pr productivity on minor tasks. I'm going to trust myself to focus on the big important stuff. Mm. So that's how I think it looks in the corporate world for me, for my client in New York, like freedom and responsibility go together. Some of us overcook responsibility and forget to create the freedom and fun. Some of us, like my artist client, probably overcooks the freedom and fun and needs to sort of level up with the self-responsibility. So that's to me how I conceive them and how they go together. Mm. Yeah, I love that, Angelot. And, you know, like with all of this, there isn't always a one-size-fits-all with this. So, you know, what's what's what might be self-trust and self-responsibility in your world and and um you know whilst i tongue-in-cheek call myself you know i've been dubbed the mystic most of the women that i work with are um you know they're high level leaders they're ceos and you know they're not engaging me to help them make more money or or, or a better life they engage me to help them love that life fully and live really alive and really connected and really um you know inspired and so it can look different for different people. You know, trusting yourself to me is about knowing yourself fully, which I've just articulated. And then when you know yourself at that level, when you know how you want your life to look, you then get to step into what is the self-responsibility piece that needs to come into play for me to bring this into a lived embodied experience. Because most of us know the life we want, or at least the lifestyle we want. And for me, how I did this for myself, I, I, I didn't do it the way I was conditioned by the business gurus for the majority of my, um, you know, startup entrepreneurial life, which was make the money, then have the life you want. To me, that is the most bogus piece of information that anybody ever gave me. I'm speaking for myself here. If it worked for you, that's amazing. But what happened for me inside of that is I worked and worked and worked and worked and worked and made lots of money and, and 
but I never got the lifestyle. So I'm chasing this thing that I, my soul just, just deeply desired and I never got there because I got so pulled into the, the hustle and the grind of, you know, create the money, then you get to have the lifestyle. So I flipped that completely. And that's when I left the corporate world and I created the life I wanted exactly the way I wanted. And now I've built my business around that. Now that took an incredible amount of self-trust to know myself and then be self-responsible for knowing and hearing fully the life I desired and then being a bloody stand for it. You know, I was laughed at by a lot of people in the business world because I decided that I just wasn't going to do it the way it was being done. Um, and I had to be a stand for it. You know, I had, I had family. Some of my family thought I was a little bit nuts because I chose to do it differently. But I chose to do it in a way that was a full body yes. And I didn't ignore that. And I didn't go, yeah, I felt that, but I'm, everyone else is doing it this way, so I'm going to do it this way. Yeah, it, it can take some steps. And, and, you know, people like Ange and myself, you know, this is what we do now to support people to be able to create that level of life for yourself because it's possible. It's totally possible. But we have to be willing to step away from, um, you know, what I call the earn, burn and churn that is um, that is sold to us as the only way because it's not. And, yeah. and the earn, burn and churn is the thing that is creating this um, endemic of burnout in our society. That is, that's my soapbox moment. <laughs> I think, you know, as I'm listening to that, I'm like, what if, um, you know, the earn, burn and churn promises, you know, the, the conventional conservative traditional thinking has been the earn, burn and churn promises lifestyle at the end, right? Mm -hmm. If you get, if you're still alive at the end, congratulations, you might get to retire into that lifestyle and then you probably might know what to do with yourself. What if it's the opposite though? What if living into the life that you love and creating that and making decisions every day? Like I could have, I've come to Harvey Bay, I could have stayed in a shitty little, you know, shitty little drive up to your door motel um, and maybe save some money. But I can tell you that my energy for today's VIP session with my client would not have been in the same place, <laughs> right? So what if living into the lifestyle gives delivers a better quality energy that is aligned for you and then you can create things in business well beyond the earn, burn and churn that you'd never even previously dreamed of because you haven't been allowing yourself to live into the lifestyle and I wrote a post on LinkedIn today saying leadership can be easy you just have to stop doing the shit that makes it hard I don't think I said shit on LinkedIn but I could I suppose it's a good tip I probably would have <laughs> um, and so living into the lifestyle for me means stop doing the things that make it hard do the things that make it easy. Um, and this might be a good transition to supportive community, Jen. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I love what you just said, Ange, so much because, yeah, what if we've been doing this, what if we've been doing this the, the, the wrong way around? And one of the things I just wanted to touch on with what you said, especially about choosing the penthouse versus, you know, the drive-up motel, the energy and vibration that that will put in put you know flood your body with when we're creating from energy and vibration that lights us up we have got access to um the quantum field in a way that we get the inspired ideas we get the intuition we get the downloads we get you know a little bit of the mystic stuff but quantum science is a proven, um, you know, proven thing. And it, and it works for us when we're at, in our highest vibration, when we are feeling good. So give you yourself know, the opportunity to align with that highest vibration yes. living into the lifestyle that you choose for yourself. 
Yeah. Give yourself the opportunity to align with that highest yeah. vibration. Yeah. yeah, creating from what feels good versus what feels shitty is going to give you a very different outcome, very yeah. different outcome. And it's and it is your energy and it is your vibration. You know, I I choose what feels good. Um, I think it's the uh, the there's a, a yoga. I say yoga lady, but she's got like five million YouTube subscribers. Yoga with Adrian. If you know yoga with Adrian, she has a catchphrase. And it's what made her so popular in yoga because she says, find what feels good with every single pose. It doesn't matter what you're doing. She will say, and she's got, you know, like she's known for this now, find what feels good. And I think it's such a beautiful piece of wisdom to take into your, into our lives. Find what feels good and move from there, operate from there, create from there. Yeah. 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 Hey, Bettina, just welcoming you in and thanks for your message this morning. And just coming back to community, Ange, um, for me, really briefly, creating a supportive community is having conversations about this, having expressing your needs openly with your family, with your teams. I'll, I'll leave the team side of things uh, for you to speak to, Ange, although it's the same in family. You know, if you're saying one thing to your family, um, but doing another, you know, if you're saying, I used to say to my kids, the best example I can give you here is I used to say to my kids, you know, do what you love and success will follow. I used to, you know, be the, you know, the carry the placard round for that. That's not what they saw at all. They saw me burning the candle at both ends and in the middle and not living happily, not living happily. In fact, I asked them when I was researching my book, I asked them, how do they remember me when they were teenagers? And I was thinking they're going to say, oh, mum, you were so inspiring. You worked so hard. You did everything for us. I asked this question independently and they gave the same answer. And this was levelling for me. But the answer they gave was they remember me being sad, angry and tired. Both of my kids. And I, I, I received it. I fully received it. Because it doesn't matter what we say to our communities, to our people. They're watching what you do. And so to create a community that supports you, it's not so much what you say, it's who you be and what you what you call in for yourself. And you'll be teaching them that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love that. The idea that living, I guess, just living into your standards. Yeah. Is a yeah model for for everyone who is watching and for everyone who is watching that you don't know is watching yeah um on supportive community for me um i've got three things the first one is raise your fucking standards <laughs> so she won't say it on linkedin but she'll say it here just can we just all note that <laughs> yeah. write that down raise your fucking standards um, and that means that I just don't have people in my world who feel misaligned, overly critical in the poor me, who live 24-7 in the poor me victim mindset. We all visit there occasionally. Um, they don't get called back. <laughs> they don't get very quick responses to their texts. Sometimes not at all. Um, I don't accept invitations. Um, I don't create invitations out of obligation, right? Um, and in business, raising your standards means hanging out with, if you've got, a, I had a client, a VIP client on Monday, we had a day together at the Emporium and she's in a business that just has a struggle story. It's a government owned utility. And she's surrounded by people who have struggle stories. She needs a different community to belong to, belonging being a core human need that has better quality conversations, that has more expansive conversations that allow her to, you know, um, experience the world of business in her case at a much higher standard. And so I say, raise your standards, <laughs> um, curate, and filter your community. And that's, you're right. Will everyone like it? No, 
Mm -mm. Some people notice, yeah, might you get a bit of flack? Yeah, this goes back to protecting your energy and trusting yourself that you're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Allow people to come and go and move through your world. Not everyone has to come and stay. People can move through your world and you can allow them to move through your world and move out of your world <laughs> if necessary. And that makes space for the third principle. So raise your standards, curate and filter. The third principle is broaden your connections mm -hmm. and make them good quality connections. And I don't mean like good quality as in they need to be senior in business or live in a certain place or have a lot of money. I mean, they have good quality conversations. I mean, they have good mindsets. I mean, that they support, they understand the value of supporting each other in business and in life, that they're willing to hold space for conversations um, about alignment, about money, maybe about strategy, but about creation and collaboration. And they're the quality of conversations that you want to bring into your world by expanding your connections, point three, on building a supportive community. Mm, I love it, Ange. Absolutely love it. And what I would offer, because what I get asked a lot when I share what Ange just shared, um, is what about family? It's a question that comes back to me quite often, but what about my family? And my response to that is you still get to decide how much time you spend with it with particular family members um, you still get to be um, in full self-responsibility about making sure that when you do be around particular family members that may have a low vibration or a low energy that you do that at a time when your energy is really really high make sure that in, you know, your environment, meaning, you know, your personal environment is optimal. You've had enough sleep. You've had enough rest. You've had good nutrition that you are high vibe, right? When you do spend, and that for some of you, that might be early in the morning is the time to do that. It might be late in the afternoon, but the self-trust and self-responsibility comes down to making those choices, yeah, you know, sometimes my sister will ring me and I love both my sisters dearly and I sometimes won't take the call because my energy, I've, I may have spent the whole day working with clients or, or whatever and I know that it's not going to be of service to her and it's absolutely not going to be of service to me. Whereas many of us will take the call and go, oh, I really have to because it's family. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, you all are sovereign humans and you all get to make that choice that's that's my offering on that yeah family i agree like when the choice is it's, it's sort of that freedom self-responsibility again for me it's when the choice is do i betray myself to spend time with people whose values are misaligned geez i don't know why you most often find them in your family yeah, I think I, I, my take on that is why are they our family? Because they're also our greatest teachers. You know, it's where we actually get to, um, we get to learn. We really do. We get, to, uh, we get to become these expanded versions of ourselves if we can know our family can be our greatest teachers. My two children have been the greatest teachers in my own um, self-development of any two humans on this planet. <laughs> Yeah. So when it comes to betraying myself and not protecting my energy to spend time with family, often I'll just choose not to. And when I choose to do it, it's I make an active choice to hold space. And if I know it's going to be difficult, I'll hold that space for a certain period of time. And then I won't overcommit to staying, um, whether it be days or hours or whatever the time frame is. Um, and the self-responsibility is, okay, I do feel a sense of responsibility towards some parts of my family and, um, you know, and so I show up for that. But yeah. it's really about doing it in the most aligned way. Sometimes I'm not always 100% aligned around my family. I choose the most aligned way I can access. Yeah. I love that, Ange, too, you know, because sometimes, yeah, sometimes we don't, you know, we do need to be able to 
go and be with our families for whatever reason. And I think when you do that, do it from a conscious choice versus I have to do this. If you if you know that that particular person, you know, is a drain on your energy and it's a, it's a t- point in time where you know it's going to be the most supportive thing for them, you know, I'm not in any way, and I know Angie's neither, suggesting that we be, I'm just going to use the word, you know, assholes about this. I'm not suggesting that at all. What I'm suggesting is if you are going to go and spend time with, with someone that you know can drain your energy, do it consciously and do it from a, a I'm claiming this space and time with them versus this is happening to me. You yeah. know, it's a much more powerful way to interact when you choose it consciously versus Ugh, this is happening to me or I have to or whatever. Mm. Absolutely agree. I just want to invite those on the call. We've got both Bettina, Diane, Emma, Mel and Sarah um, to maybe just offer a comment for us in the chat, if you can, about like what's been the one or two biggest takeaways from the conversation we've had so far. Mm. Um, we started with the theme of self-trust and self-responsibility and freedom and responsibility. And now we've just been talking about creating a supportive community to support us in our life beyond burnout. So I'd love to see in the chat, if you could, just like what have your aha moments, your key Mm. takeaways and insights been? Mm. And I think, I think, Ange, while um, people are typing in the chat, I hope, and I'm really looking forward to the, to what you, what you all share. We said we would um, also just give two or three things at the end that are just practical things, you know, that we feel would give you the biggest, um, you know, shift on your growth edges. Um, so I'm going to jump right in now while um, while we're waiting. So for me, I've got three and they're really, really simple and I've talked about them already today. Uh, so I won't go heavily into them, but the first one is your energy. I value my energy more than I value time and money. I really do. It is, I, I, will, I will put my energy above um, uh, saying yes to a client that's not aligned with me just for the money. I, I won't just work with anybody. And my time as well, I, my energy goes above the time that people want from me. If my energy um, is in any way not at full vibe, that is the very first port of call for me. So my energy, protect your energy. It is critical to your creativity, your productivity and your burnout prevention. It truly is. The second is intuition, which to me comes into the self-trust piece. Um, Tuning in. We, We can only trust ourselves to the level and degree we know ourselves. If you do not know yourself, you're going to be trusting a limiting belief, a pattern, a habit, or a behavior that's been conditioned into you, and it's not you. So we, the only way we can truly know how to trust ourselves fully and know ourselves at that level is through our intuition, tuning in to your soul voice, right? And in episode two, we, I, we shared the soul voice meditation, so go back to that. And the third piece for me Um, And I did a little Facebook Live on this this morning and it dropped in because it's something that I do naturally and and I don't think too much about it. I I start my days full. What does that mean? It means that I do something in in the very start of the day before I open my phone, before I dive into my day that is going to put myself into a state of fullness. This morning I did a quick Uh, Actually, I did a long walk this morning, but sometimes I just do a 10, 15 minute walk and it just fills me up. Sometimes if I haven't got time to walk, I'll do a five minute soul voice meditation, which I which I shared with you in episode two. But I always start my day before I start my day full because then I don't end my day depleted. Yeah. So they're my three. Beautiful. Thank you, Jen. I love those. I'm taking some of those on board. I really like, yeah, this morning's share of starting the day full. Mm. Um, absolutely love that. It Just doesn't have to be anything the- big, you know, like, like, and I know you know this, Ange, you know, starting your day full 
truly can be done in 60 seconds just by stopping before you get out of bed and just closing your eyes for 60 yep. seconds and just starting your day here. Yeah. Just noticing the comments coming in. Emma's saying definitely the people who I decide to spend my time with, acknowledging that our energy cycles, yes, finding what feels good and feeling ashamed, struggling to find a clear answer. I'll comment on that in a second, Sarah. I've been there. Um, me too. Oh, my gosh, me too. I didn't know what felt good for good decade of my life yeah recognizing what burnout really is self-value and respecting boundaries yeah sarah i'll just come back to you offer a small tidbit before i go to offer my three things for like ongoing support of yourself um give yourself permission to explore fuck it up get it wrong change direction um you know when i didn't know what felt good i learned to dive turns out i didn't like being that far underwater um, I climbed mountains and at the time it is for me now, but it was not for me then. <laughs> I love that. Um, I tried to do arty things, which I have returned to. And let's just say I realized I'm not an artistic genius. And then one day I said, what did I like when I was little? I loved horses. And so I booked myself into a trail ride. I went back every weekend for three years. Um, then I um, adopted my own horses have been with me for 11 years now and allow yourself permission to explore Sarah so that it, it's 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 less self-responsibility more freedom in your case um, more freedom to explore get it wrong change direction and it will lead you to the next thing so that is my advice on finding what feels good mm, I love that Ange yeah and I think yeah uh, you touched on it beautifully you, you found it when you went back to when you were a kid you know, if you if we are having if we are struggling to find what feels good, just spend a few minutes daydreaming about when you were a kid and what were the things that you loved to do. There will be a way of bringing an adult version of that into your day. You know, yeah, yeah. Just give yourself the permission to explore. I think yeah. is, is the thing. So my three things for sort of ongoing support, and they're things that I live myself. Um, when I'm supporting myself, I'm leaning into expansion and creation and feeling good. And I'm leaving my struggle story. So leave it behind. I just don't engage with it. It's like not reading the newspaper because I think it's not full of good quality news anymore if it ever was it's like it's the same reason I don't watch a current affair because I think it's often stupid people doing stupid things I don't engage with it so one is stop engaging with your struggle story and start leaning into expansion and creation and what what that feels like what you can dream what you can imagine and leaning into it then means taking action towards it so what does expansion and creation look like for you at this time? Is it a weekend away? Is it planning your next overseas trip? Is it planning something you'd like to create in your business or the business that you're in? What does that look like for you? What does that expansive energy lead you towards? What's possible, right? Number one, expand and create and get out of the struggle story. Number two, same as Jen, tune into yourself and stay aligned as a priority, even when you think it won't be popular with others. Um, at the end of the day. Big growth edge for me. At the end of the day, you don't really owe anyone anything and they don't owe you anything. Um, so be, being self-responsible is being responsible to yourself. Yeah, so um, leaning into that alignment and being, staying tuned into yourself. And then the third one for me um, is find mentors. Um, the mentors I hired maybe three weeks ago have opened up and held space for such expansion in my life that if they never said another word to me ever again, which won't be the case, but if that was the case, I would be so grateful for what they have opened up for me. Um, 
The mentors I've hired in the past, I've had several, I made a video about it a few weeks ago, probably invested 60, 70 grand into mentoring over the last seven years. That's not other courses, that's just mentoring, maybe more, I don't know. Um, they taught me how to sell in a really aligned way. They taught me how to not burn out. They taught me how to um, stop looking to the external world for answers, <laughs> go internal, right? And this means now that I can continue, like I'm not the finished article by any stretch of the imagination. It's a lifelong journey. Continue to find mentors. And the reality is they'll be paid mentors. They very rarely will be the free ones. And if they are, you've just got to be really careful that they don't have some self-interest um, in your, you know, in guiding your story in a particular way. Um, but find mentors. I'm loving working with mine at the moment. And yeah, find the people who have what you want and start to follow them wherever they are, LinkedIn, Insta, whatever. And then when you're feeling ready, reach out and engage, see what they've got for you. Mm. Yeah, I love that, Ange. Particularly because... Um, you know, even if you are not in a position to work with someone that you really see as someone you would really like to have as a mentor, and a mentor is someone, and you say this, Ange, and I love it, and I, I, you know, have this for myself now, a mentor are those independent eyes on your business or on your life or on you. You can't see you, you know, unless I take my eyeballs out of my head and turn them back at myself, I can't see me independently. I can't. I see myself through my patterns and filters. And that means I can't see my life or my business either because I'm also seeing that. That's the, um, the, the to me, the biggest benefit of having a mentor, yeah, is for that reason alone. You get independent eyes on you or what it is that you're doing or trying to create. Yeah, um, yeah I really love that. Love that a lot. I think their investment, you know, if they have an agenda, it's that your success becomes their success. Mm. So what I like about paid mentors is when you're successful, you want to continue to engage with them. And mm. therefore, their only, their highest good for you, their service to you is to have you living into all that you can be, mm. right? If you're not ready for that and you're stuck in your struggle story, don't waste your money on mentors. Mm. <laughs> Wait until you're ready to go. I'm done. <laughs> your story becomes so painful that you go, fuck it. I just need a new. I don't have anything else to throw at this. My strategies haven't worked. I need new ways of thinking. I need new options. I need help. I need support. I need someone to walk alongside me. Mm. That's when you engage a mentor. If you're stuck in your struggle story and you're happy to stay there for a bit longer, then enjoy it. Soak it up. Let me know mm. how it works out for you. But it's a painful place to be. Yeah. It is. The comfort zone is the most. I don't know who named the comfort zone the comfort zone because they, they had a really, really twisted sense of humor, quirky sense of humor. The comfort zone is the most uncomfortable place that we will ever, ever be. It is the most uncomfortable place. And I also just um, wanted to touch on something you said about follow the people uh, that, um, you know, that you feel. Yeah. Yes. Because, what you want. Yeah. Even if you're not in a position to work with them right now, yep. follow them because just, you know, it's like being selective with what your exposure, a word that I um, tune into a lot is is exposure what am I what am I exposed to right now which is why and Ange nor I watch the news read the papers and all the rest of it um, but I do expose myself very selectively on LinkedIn on Facebook on Instagram to the energies that align that I feel super super aligned with that I um, want you know to have more of in my body and my being yeah so uh, that's a really good point. Follow them. If you can't work mentor. with them, follow them. I followed my mentors for probably 18 months and I tried to crack their code. I followed them. I followed their clients. I'm like, I, I can, I'm a smart woman. I can figure this out. And as it turns out, I probably, they were making their strategy clear through their social media. But what they've given me is not strategy. It's, they've opened up 
permission, space, possibility for me to think bigger and step into that more expansive way of living and working and being. And that's worth, um, you know, the 10 grand that I dropped in one phone call to engage them. It's worth every cent. And by the way, um, I'm like, when I engage them, I'm like, fuck, 10 grand. It's the first time I've spoken to them over the phone. Um, what that allowed then in terms of money is for three new clients to come in at the value of about 35 um, because it's kind of like I, it's kind of like I had the door shut to money because I wasn't letting it flow through. Mm. Um, that's not everyone's philosophy on money and actually it brings me to our next point then, but allow segue Ange. <laughs> allowing for money to flow in and out of your life in a discerning way and allowing some to accumulate in the background. Um, I had, was not allowing that flow and as soon as I um, paid up front, <laughs> on the phone this is the way I work now um yeah these other three clients came in and paid it paid for the thing three times over so I just want to say that leap of faith that leap of trust whether it's engaging a mentor whether it's tuning into yourself whether it's leaning in towards expansion that leap of faith and trust it requires to lean forward is really you know the key for me mm. and if you're on this call and you have taken that leap I and just truly just doing a little bow down to you Looking because you. yeah yeah really 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 honoring you yeah for taking that leap for yourselves um and do you want to uh, share the se the segue yeah <laughs> so jen and i on the mountain thought we'd do this series of four we thought it's a good number the, the corporate and the mystic breaking down burnout and we hope that we've like it's been our intent our desire mm. to communicate all of the value that we could possibly offer in this time frame to you and we hope you've received that um yeah that was our good intent and we're kind of like we liked it so much jen had an idea drop in we're going to do a new series a new mini series season two <laughs> coming soon it's like of our mini series <laughs> and we're gonna call it the corporate the mystic and the money ta-da drum roll should have done drum roll i'm so the mystic and the money and it's about aligning your purpose with your lifestyle with your money and we're bringing in a money expert you can read if you um google her you'll find her everywhere she's an economist um has just set up a bank on the Sunshine Coast and has all sorts of money and personal wealth expertise. Her name is Jo Nolan. Yeah, Jodie Nolan. Jodie no Jody Nolan, yeah. We call so, it, she goes by Jo and Jodie. So <laughs> yeah, Bettina, love her. Yeah, Jodie, um, I've known Jodie, I think for about, I'm getting older now and I forget how many years have passed, but I've probably known Jodie for about a decade now. Um, she spoke at a program that I ran about three or four years ago now and um, we just connected randomly about doing something like that again at Christmas time and lo and behold this all came about in just a oh wouldn't that be the coolest thing ever to get you know again tongue-in-cheek the corporate the mystic and the money because they are all connected they are not separate things they're all connected Mm. Yeah, I love that like we're putting money on the table because it's like what what we had intended to do with this series was put discuss the undiscussables and we wanted to remove the shame around burnout and to sort of normalize and then challenge the experience of burnout through discussion, through talking about it, through being really raw and open and honest about how it is. And money is one of those undiscussable things. And because we don't discuss it in our households quite often growing up, we don't have we don't have any wisdom, we don't have any strategies around money. If it wasn't discussed in our upbringing because it's not polite, then we've what are we left with in our adult life and how do we learn that? And that's why we're bringing Jody to the table, mm -hmm. the corporate, the mystic and the money. And that starts, you know, I want to say about two or three weeks time, Jen. Yeah. 17th of March. It'll be this, yeah. we're going to keep it at this time slot seems to work. There'll be recordings and replays. Um, I will put a link for everybody who's caught the replay in today's email. It may be missing a graphic, 
And if it does, then it's perfect. But the link to register will be there for you with all the information. Um, that's us honoring our energy, just on the graphic, the piece on the graphic. I won't go into it, but that's us honoring our energy. So there's a working example for you. Um, yeah, but do come and join us. It will be a really deep and immersive conversation about money, you know, and like Ange said, let's, like we put burnout on the table, let's bring and put money on the table as well. It's, I'm excited That's for it. Any questions from you guys? Any parting comments on season one? Of the I know. No. Suddenly we're, we're doing seasons, Edge. You well, know, started Netflix, as so just it's a, it, I reckon. And can I just say, this is a beautiful, beautiful example, lived example of what we've just been talking about today. And that is we were in our highest vibration doing what felt good, which was on a hiking trail together, filling ourselves up, starting full, right? And what dropped in? this beautiful piece of um, work that we've, this body of work that we've just shared and touched so many beautiful women and men, because I know men are catching the replay too. Um, that's how it works. And then we trusted, we heard it, we trusted, we had no idea where it was going to go or what was going to happen with it. We trusted and then we got fully self-responsible about showing up and creating it. So there's an exact lived example for you <laughs> of how this works. All right. Um, so we've got two minutes left. I would just love to see something, comments from you guys coming into the chat. Maybe, you know, think about the burnout series at large. We started with how to identify that you're in burnout and then we went into um, sort of some strategies for getting through burnout and last week we did gifts and lessons from the burnout experience and then this week we're saying there's life a big beautiful expansive creative life beyond burnout and tune into yourself trust yourself mm -hmm. so I just love to see something coming into the comments around what's dropping out for you as we close out the call literally been experiencing this season in my last week the awareness has been good and been more understanding of your own of your season your cycle season one has been amazing <laughs> ah i think we're talking season one can't think it oh season one not cycle got you yeah <laughs> thanks bettina um not to be confused got yes you. emma that is brilliant, brilliant making a conscious decision to be kinder to myself, taking more time out and meditating. Yeah. My gosh, amazing. Season one, Bettina. Season one, yeah. <laughs> amazing. Well, Ange, it has been an absolute joy, hasn't it? And just before yeah. we wrap up, yeah, yeah, go. I yeah, no, well, for me, like the opportunity to talk about burnout I hadn't really talked about it fully up until this point because I was probably experiencing some denial, some shame, some just lack of certainty about like who would it serve and would it actually serve to talk about it. Mm. Um, and yeah, so thanks, Jen, for being um, such a wonderful collaborator uh, and creator of this series. I've loved it. Oh, me too. Look, me too. I just love being in your company, Ange, you know, and that also lends to uh, the conversation. You know, surround yourselves with people that make you feel good, who whose energy you align with. And, yeah, watch the magic that happens. It, it's just yeah. a beautiful thing. It's been a joy to bring this conversation. And I think just to wrap up, you know, one of the things we, Ange and I, haven't really talked about, and, and this isn't about that, but we feel like we should share it anyway, is um, is working with us. You know, if, if anyone feels that they would like to work with us, please just reach out. It's, you know, we, we will each have a 15-minute conversation. And who, who are you best to support? Yeah, good question. Um, basically, I work at the intersection of leadership development and personal development. So if you are a person who needs to... Um, you know you need to change your mindset and accumulate some leadership skills so that you can manage yourself 
and your teams better at work or your business, um, particularly if you're a business owner and you're stuck in the churn of business and you know that there's a better experience of business, like you didn't get into business for that reason, there's a better experience of business out there. You want to create some headspace. You want to be more strategic. You want to have more fun and freedom in life. Um, I'm a leadership coach and my offering at the moment is the VIP client experience where we work together for a very short, sharp period of 30 days to create a roadmap for you. Um, and I meet you exactly where you are and tailor that specific, specifically to you. It's not a stock standard program. And then from there, after that 30 days, we can decide if we want to go on and do some more work together. But really that 30 days is about focusing on giving you exactly what you need right now in terms of mindset and leadership skills for the workplace. Mm, amazing. And I think we said at the start, Angie and I work in very similar space, but it's, it is slightly nuanced. So for me, I also work at that intersection of self-development and self-leadership. So the work I do with women is to support them at a foundational level. So if you feel that you may have some limiting beliefs, some conditioning, some patterns, some programs that you've taken on and you are currently living as a version of you that doesn't feel true for you, then I would probably be the person that you would want to come and see right now to clear that if we really want to create something that we are fully aligned with, that comes from um, an aligned version of us, we must clear our patterning, our conditioning, our limiting beliefs at the root cause, at the level of the unconscious mind. Otherwise, you're just going to keep creating from a version of you that isn't actually you. So I have a four-week container. My group program is full of, I've got a couple of um, people here uh, that have worked with me and do work with me. And I have a four-week one-on-one uh, -on -one program that I offer for women. It is very, uh, very immersive. And I use a modality called timeline therapy um, that plays a very, very big part in the process. So that's me. Yeah, so reach out to us if we can support you to have a more aligned and alive experience of your life <laughs> or business. Consider this your invitation. It's personal. <laughs> we might close off, Jen. What do you think? Yeah, I think so. It's just been a pleasure. And I'm so excited about the season one, season two. Who knows what season three could bring? Yeah. We'll just let that percolate and drop in. We'll probably come up with that on our next mountain. <laughs> All right. Um, thanks so much, everyone, for joining us. We appreciate your time and tuning in and acknowledge the commitment you've made to yourself to be learning with us. Um, and, yeah, we'll see you in season two for the corporate, the mystic and the money. And the money. Bring it on. All right, beautiful people. Thank you, Ange. I love you. I adore you. And I appreciate every single person that's been with us live or has caught the replay. Lots of love. <laughs>